Hey, and welcome back to PN Wreckage, your authority for mostly accurate information about the Ram with the Cummins engine equipped. I'm Christian, and today we're going to be talking about emissions, DEF fluid, and my experience with all of those. So I've had a lot of uh, viewer questions about this, and it's not something that I knew enough about off the top of my head to just really speak to, and so I wanted to make sure that I could at least sound like I'm not a total idiot while I try to fumble through uh, words that have a lot more syllables than I'm used to pronouncing. So uh, emissions and regen and DEF are all something that people are pretty concerned about when it comes to looking at the possibility of buying a diesel truck, and for fair reason. I mean, I think it's a super complicated system. Not a lot of it makes a ton of sense unless you bother to read through a lot of really boring literature about it, and so I wanted to cover a little bit about just really what the point is for these emission systems in the first place. So I'll just try to keep that pretty quick. I'll talk to you about what my DEF consumption has looked like, um, about what regen looks like for me, because I do have a pretty varied driving style or a pretty uh, wide contrast to a lot of the different drives that I do, anything from a lot of city trips to a lot of highway trips. So here it is. The three main issues we're gonna be talking about with diesel exhaust today are carbon dioxide, nitrous oxides, and particulates. Carbon dioxide is widely regarded as like the largest greenhouse gas. Uh, I'll just, I'm not gonna get into a political discussion here, but just that's, it's a lot of the driving force behind the EPA and why certain things in this truck are the way they are. Nitrous oxides are not to be confused with nitrous oxide, which is laughing gas or go fast stuff for uh, race cars from Fast and the Furious. Uh, it is a series, it is either, I believe it is nitric oxide or nitrogen dioxide, and I could be wrong on those, but anyway, nitrous oxides are uh, something that adds to just like lung irritation and whatever. It's another one of those issues, one of those substances that they're trying to keep out of the air. And the third and final are particulates, and particulates are microscopic particles. They're actually super abrasive in nature and they cling to your lungs, so that's not really a good thing but it's what's been deemed from uh, diesel exhaust to be the primary cause of cancer, or primary carcinogen in diesel exhaust fumes. So uh, although they're microscopic, it sure doesn't look like it when geniuses are rolling coal on the guy jogging down the street. So those are the three major things that we're looking at when it comes to why there are all these emissions equipment or emission systems on, uh, on your RAM straight from the factory. And it's just something to consider when you're deleting your RAM. All right, so I guess let's kind of work in the engine bay out to the exhaust. It seems like the sort of most logical way to go through it. Um, number one, the EGR, or the exhaust gas for circulation valve, is uh, not something that's super popular among enthusiasts, and it does two things that I think, probably more than that, but two things I think are pretty notable. One is it takes up a tremendous amount of room in your engine bay, and the second is that it decreases efficiency and can be a uh, wear point, something needs to be fixed like in the future. So uh, the EGR essentially works to minimize nitrous oxide production or, or really what's coming out of your tailpipe. And it does that by siphoning off a little bit of your exhaust gases, uh, really just kind of post turbo, post hot out of your turbo, um, and rerouting them back through uh, your intake manifold into your, into your combustion chamber. That's important because not only are those filthy and it just it's, it displaces whatever clean air would have been there in the first place so not only does it do that but it also uh, relies on engine coolant to cool it down to the point where you're not just introducing exhaust gas temperature air directly into your intake manifold so essentially it just siphons off a bit of your gas, recirculates that back into the combustion chamber, it goes through the process again, and the result is that you have less nitrous oxides coming out uh, at the end of your tailpipe, which again can cause some breathing issues, it can exacerbate asthma and bronchitis, and or studies show, I don't, again, don't wanna get into a political discussion here because I think it's hard to do one of these without that topic coming up, but it can result in those breathing issues, and there's also some evidence that nitrous oxides uh, contribute to uh, smog in the lower atmosphere. So shout out to my homies in LA. This is typically, or like science says, that nitrous oxides are generally produced in oxygen-rich environments uh, when the temperature is pretty high. So essentially when you're running lean down the freeway, you know, if you're at cruising speed, 
you know, a lot of times if you see a semi doing this, you're just gonna see what looks basically like steam coming out or just heat coming out the exhaust, not steam. And um, during those low load, high temp, oxygen rich environments, you're creating a lot of nitrous oxides. And so that is unfortunately one of the byproducts of the EPA regula regulations is that even if you're just cruising down the freeway in your six fo or in your 90, whatever, in your RAM, then you don't have, and you're not being as efficient as you would like to be and your EGR is recirculating stuff to go back in. Because the ultimate goal here is for RAM to have the least, or for Cummins to have the least impact on the, on the environment. And it's not, so it's not necessarily about each system operating more and more efficiently, it's about the overall system just crapping out less stuff that's gonna make us hate this place a lot more in like 50 years, so there's that. So that's the, the EGR and that is why it exists and it's something that really your engine bay just looks a million times better without it there, but something that I cannot delete quite yet. Beginning about 2007 and a half, uh, the diesel oxidation catalyst was installed, and it, which is a really fancy way for saying it's a cat for diesels. So that is the case, and it's built into your turbo downpipe on the 6.7, or at least it was based on the diagram that I looked at. And the diesel oxidation catalyst is, it essentially takes uh, really, really high purity chemicals, or not chemicals, like rare substances like palladium and platinum, or I don't know, and operates as a catalyst in order to convert hydrocarbons and the really nasty stuff coming out of your exhaust into water and carbon dioxide. And remember that carbon dioxide is one of the main things that the EPA is concerned about, and so that's a little bit counterproductive, but there's a, a point to all of this. Uh, so that is what the diesel oxidation catalyst does, and it's one of those things that people generally rip off when they fully delete their truck. Alright, so now on to the topic of regen. And regen is something that takes place for the case or for the sake of your diesel particulate filter. And your diesel particulate filter is like just a disgusting piece of technology. It's a giant honeycomb shaped chunk that you cannot even see through. The fact that exhaust gases are actually able to make it through that mess really surprises me. But the whole point of that is to eliminate up to 90% of the particulate matter, AKA soot, coming out of your exhaust. And it does a pretty good job of that. The trade-off is that you lose a tremendous amount of efficiency, meaning power and fuel efficiency go out the window. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the two types of regens that you have. Uh, well, one is that you have this giant blockage in your exhaust. The other is that you have two different types of regens. Uh, one is called passive and the other is called active. Passive regen is something that occurs when temperatures in your exhaust are around 950 degrees and is something that generally takes place when you're in those, as we discussed earlier, the things that produce nitrous oxides, the uh, high oxygen environment, high temperature environment, and low load which means when you're cruising on the freeway, more than likely you are working on creating high enough temperatures, if you're doing it long enough, that you'll be able to help knock a lot of that soot that's built up on your diesel particulate filter into ash, which just accumulates in the giant tube around the diesel particulate filter in your exhaust. So ash is fine because you can pay, you know, $4 million later on to have them cut it open and remove all of that and clean it. Soot accumulation is not fine, and there's a sensor that measures back pressure between your diesel particulate filter and your engine that sort of measures how full it actually is. So people who are in a, a city environment or just a place where they're never really getting to a point where they are they're not towing regularly, and even if they were, they're not really doing it for long stretches, or you know maybe their engine isn't getting warmed up every day in a way that it should be. People who are going who have that kind of a need for their truck may run into issues with uh, active regeneration happening a lot more because passive regeneration cannot take place so active regeneration must because uh, obviously you need to be able to have exhaust gases get through that filter. Active regeneration on a Cummins takes place a little bit differently than it does with a Duramax or with uh, definitely Duramax maybe with a power stroke and here's basically what that is. On a Duramax you have 
uh, another diesel injector that uh, runs into your exhaust stream and injects diesel so that it can heat up your exhaust enough, even if you're just sitting at idle, um, to burn off some of that soot that's accumulated on the diesel particulate filter. Cummins does things a little differently, and I don't know why, but I'm also not a Cummins engineer, and so I'll just give them the benefit of the doubt that they definitely know more about diesels than I do. Cummins, instead of running an additional injector into the exhaust stream itself, Cummins does what's called a late cycle injection, or like, uh, or a late stage injection cycle. Long story short, they inject another pulse of diesel during the exhaust stroke of um, of your engine, of your uh, internal combustion engine normal cycle, because you have an intake stroke where it builds compression, and then you have uh, firing from a spark plug, or in this case, compression, and then you have the exhaust stroke where it evacuates those gases. During the exhaust stroke, it injects some additional fuel into that massive accumulation of hot gases coming out of your engine, and that can produce high enough temperatures to uh, fulfill the regen temperature requirements and bake that soot off your diesel particulate filter into ash, which is, again, manageable, whereas soot is not. There are two downsides to active regeneration, if you, you know, excluding the fact that you still have all of your emissions equipment and stuff on there because that sucks. But the two downsides to having active regeneration occur, at least in the Cummins, are number one, it, it uses fuel. And you'll see an actual, a noticeable reduction in your uh, real-time fuel economy if your truck is going through a regen. Mine will go anywhere from 18 miles to, gal to the gallon as I'm just cruising along to down to 11 or 12. And it doesn't do it for an extended period of time, but it does do it for several minutes. And I don't get a lot of those, well, full disclosure, but I have noticed active regens on this truck and that's a problem. Uh, just, I would like to see less of those, but you know, it's not a huge impact on my fuel economy, but I do believe that I am achieving passive, uh, passive regens very regularly because of the nature of many of my drives, which involve long stretches on either country roads or the highway. So for whatever that's worth. The other downside to having your uh, injection of diesel to accomplish an active regen occur actually in your combustion chamber is that some of that doesn't fully exit and can end up diluting your oil. Now diesels have a natural amount of blow by anyway so there's a bit of an argument about how much it actually contributes to uh, watering down, not watering down, like fueling down your oil. But as your oil accumulates more and more fuel in it, it loses its lubricity. And a lot of that, a lot of the positive benefits of really solid oil are that it, produce, it prevents shearing and it prevents metal on metal in contact. And so when metal on metal contact is allowed to happen, it increases wear in your engine and just really bad things happen. So I don't love how Cummins did that, but that is essentially what uh, active regen versus passive regen is. So passive being sort of the lesser of two evils and active being something that even somebody who puts a ton of miles in their truck like me is going to see from time to time and it does have an effect on your fuel economy at least in that moment. I'm not saying it does you know over the life of a tank by any means but as you'll hear from anybody who has fully deleted their truck they're noticing substantial power gains but also substantial fuel mileage gains and I think a lot of that has to do with just this lack of restriction in your exhaust as well as a lack of need to burn additional fuel to accomplish this task that you know the EPA wants you to. The final portion of this and I'll now I, so here is a graphic showing everything I've been talking about I'm probably I'll have put that up because when you're editing one of these you notice all the things that you missed out on in terms of opportunities to like identify what these things look like and so I'll include some visuals for you guys because I know you like those. Hi lady, waving at me. You seem really enthusiastic. So I'll wave back. The final component, unless you, you know, exclude your muffler here because nobody cares about that. Uh, the final component in this series of emissions, and it's just really just a god awful series of emissions restrictions and pieces of technology sitting on your exhaust system. But here it is, it's called selective catalytic reduction. And this is something that didn't exist prior to the 2013 model year, at least in um, non-chassis cab rams. I believe it was implemented in 2011 with chassis cab rams and 2013 uh, with just 
trucks like this. So selective cat catalytic reduction relies on the use of diesel exhaust fluid or DEF or diesel, diesel emissions fluid. I mean, I've heard of a lot of different names for it, but everybody knows what DEF is or do you? So it relies on the use of DEF to uh, convert nitrous oxides into essentially nitrogen gas and water, which is why if you stand outside of one of these trucks, if it's just even sitting there idling, it smells kind of like a pool or it's got just a bizarre smell. And the last thing that you smell out of it is diesel. So you have an injector that runs from your diesel exhaust fluid tank, which is typically five gallons on these trucks. And I think it's a little bit bigger on the 3500 or might be just the dually, but it's an exhaust or a, an injector that runs from that tank to the uh, selective catalytic reduction unit and uh, sprays in a solution of 37.5% bovine urea, which is a component of cow urine. And uh, the remaining, what would that be, 62.5% is uh, deionized water. So not something that you would want to drink even if there weren't cow piss in it, but something to keep in mind. That stuff is generally pretty stable. And anyway, the point of that whole point of it is it, it's pretty, a pretty miraculous reaction. And it's not something that I'm smart enough to explain to you how it works, but the fact that it can take all of these things that really are not good for you. And with a simple squirt of some cow pee and deionized water or DI water as you science folks out there will appreciate uh, that that can turn that into hydrogen gas, which is not a greenhouse gas and water, which is great. So, um, those are really the emission systems that really like what you're looking at in terms of all the things that you'll likely rip off your truck and as soon as you're out of warranty or maybe before you're out of warranty if you like to live on the wild side. Uh, regarding my experience with these, so I bought my truck, you know, I, or, I custom ordered it, but I picked it up March 9th. And so March 9th, when I picked it up, I drove to Spokane, Washington. I got in it and it had a full tank of DEF or DEF and I drove it home and drove it around. And then right about a little over a month later, I noticed that I was really, I was really empty on DEF and I thought, all right, well, I've driven about 4,000 miles. So let's add some DEF. So I bought two, two and a half gallon boxes. It's like a bag in a box and it comes with a little spigot. And I picked it up at my local hardware store or local auto parts store for $12.50, give or take. Because it's a five gallon tank, I bought two of those. So I added it and I only had about maybe three ounces that wouldn't go in. So I had at least, you know, from what, it, from what I could tell and that can change based on temperature and how much, you know, how big your tank is because of expansion. But I, can, I only had about three ounces of DEF left. And I know some of you are gonna say, don't ever let it get that low. And I totally get that. So just, just for your information, right about 4,000 miles is when I burned through my first tank of DEF. And that kind of came as a surprise to me because it did not go through it that fast in my 2016 truck. So I, I am now at 10,697 miles and about 500 miles ago. So right just over 10,000 miles, I was back in that position of I had the warning light that said 150 miles remaining until uh, you will be derated basically to five miles per hour and you get to limp mode yourself home. So I thought, all right, well, no, let's not do that. Went to the auto parts store and it was on the same exact price. So $12.50 for uh, two and a half gallons of DEF. I bought both of those, filled it back up, had some remaining left over again. And so it continues. So I achieved essentially a 50% increase in uh, how far diesel exhaust fluid went between my first refilling of it and my second. And I anticipate that that will continue to go up. It did with my last truck as well. And uh, some of you out there are probably thinking, all right, that's a lot of money to be paying for diesel exhaust fluid. And it might be, but remember I live in the Pacific Northwest and we don't have these giant metropolitan hubs out here. So the truck stops that do have diesel exhaust fluid on hand or none of them are in my area. And even if they were, I'm not sure it's busy enough to warrant my use of that. And the reason for that is because if you get water, if your mixture of diesel exhaust fluid gets thrown off away from that exact ratio of 37.5% bovine urea and 62.5%
uh, deionized water, like if you get just regular water in it or some diesel fluid fuel in it or whatever contaminants there are, that can cause catastrophic failure to your DEF system. And as a result of that, since your truck requires it to operate, it's going to prevent you from going anywhere over five miles per hour. So be really careful. Uh, don't buy old diesel exhaust fluid, my advice to you. It does have a really reasonable shelf life, even in like 95 degree conditions, 95 degrees Fahrenheit for my Canadian viewers. Uh, even in that type of a setting, it still has a shelf life of I think six months, but you're looking at more like a year if it's just at room temperature, you know, keep it out of the light, whatever the case is, but just buy new stuff. And that's why I, I keep buying from this place. They, it turns over really quickly. There are a ton of diesel trucks in my town and I don't have concerns about water accumulating or other contaminants accumulating in that DEF as it sits on the shelf. Uh, DEF, generally speaking, is not going to harm your paint. So if you are refilling it yourself and you spill a little on your truck, don't cry about it. I'd say I'd way rather spill DEF than diesel on my paint. Uh, but it is uh, corrosive to copper and something else, but I don't believe it has any, you don't have any concerns with it getting on your hands, with it getting on your driveway or sidewalk, or with it getting on uh, your paint, just wash it off with water. You don't want to drink it, but if you do drink it, don't induce vomiting and call poison control. And stop drinking cow pee, that's weird. Yay, a school bus is in front of me. So that has been my experience with DEF consumption. And uh, in terms of my own regen situation, um, it has happened, you know, I don't, I don't see it a ton, and to be fair, I'm not always looking at my gauge, but it has happened before. I don't, it's not a huge downside, but I'm, a, I'm in love with Cummins. I'm absolutely in love with this truck. I think that there would be, I would have a hard time buying it if I were in one of those places where I'm just never traveling super far, I'm never really working the truck, and it's constantly going through active regens. I, I think you put a lot more wear on a lot of different systems as a result of that and it leads to potential failures down the road. Uh, the argument would be why would you need a Cummins if you were in that kind of environment and the, you know the Cummins name is has such a nice reputation now that a lot of people are looking at these trucks as their I'm going to drive it until it falls apart truck and you know Cummins premium be damned, I do I need 800 foot pounds of torque? No, but I want a bulletproof engine. And I, and I actually kind of get that. And so if that's your goal, if that's why you're looking at a Cummins, just be really careful that you're not buying something that because of the environment it's going to be used in, where you're not really working it hard enough to burn a lot of those things off. That, or just delete it, you know, the second day you got it, if you're not super concerned about the worst happening and your warranty being voided. So oh, my first DEF purchase was April 11th, and my second DEF purchase was June 15th. So I went from one month to two months, and granted it a little bit less towing, but DEF consumption is definitely going down, and I will look forward to that continuing to happen as mileage continues to go up. Um, that's basically it. I have not experienced one single problem with my diesel exhaust fluid system, uh, my like the injection system has been working fine. I also think that that's probably related to the fact that I drive the hell out of this thing and three months after owning it, I'm at 10,000 miles. Um, I haven't had any issues with my exhaust gas recirculation valve and that apparently has been reduced in 2013 and up trucks. Your EGR issues are uh, becoming less concerning apparently and that's largely because you're able to, remember I said at the beginning, your, it, your goal here is to accomplish an overall reduction in harmful uh, components of your exhaust. And so because of diesel exhaust fluid and because of you know, the way that these things are set up now in the selective catalytic reduction system, because of those systems, there's less of a need for your EGR to siphon uh, engine gases off of your exhaust and recirculate them through your combustion chamber. And because of that, you're seeing less issues with soot accumulation on uh, your EGR and whatever the case is. But remember, that does decrease efficiency. All of these things really decrease efficiency. And depending on which side of the fence you're on in terms of performance versus 
you know, and being environmentally conscious. If you are a tree hugger, and I, full disclosure, I live in Oregon, man, I hug a lot of trees, but I also really like guns and diesel trucks, and so those things don't always get along really well, but if your goal is to have a minimal impact on the environment, leave your emission systems intact, because really what it does do is quite impressive, and obviously you're willing to pay a little bit more to take care of the environment. If you have more of a focus on longevity of your vehicle and on efficiency of your vehicle, then rip those things off. I mean, I can't officially tell you to do that because I think it's illegal, but in a perfect world where it wasn't illegal, rip those things off because they're just more parts to go wrong. They restrict your efficiency, be it fuel economy or power, and aren't necessary for the proper uh, operation of your truck. Oh. I hope this has been helpful. If you guys have any questions or if there's anything I missed or anything I got wrong, please let me know and I will uh, address your comments as quickly as I can. If you have something I super just screwed up on, leave it in a comment. I'll pin that comment just so it's not misinformation for those moving forward. Oh, uh, next video should be about my HID headlights. So please join me for that. And as always, if you have any other questions, if you don't want to talk to me openly on YouTube, feel free to send me an email at pnwreckage at gmail.com or uh, follow me on Instagram. PNWreckage is my username. Thanks again for hanging in there and I hope this shed some light on just the giant crapshoot that is the emission system on this truck. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one.